We're just going to have some praise and worship this morning. Come on, we're going to praise him for what he's done, for what he's going to do. Come on. Everything, Everything that has breath. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let everything, Let everything that, has that has breath. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I praise in the valley. I praise on the mountain. Yeah. I praise when I'm sure. I praise when I'm doubting. I praise when I'm numbered. I praise when surrounded. Cause praise is the water, my enemies drowning. Oh, as long as I'm breathing, I've got a reason to praise the Lord, oh my soul. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. Come on, I praise when I feel it. I know, I praise cause I know, you're still in control, my praise is a weapon, my praise is a weapon, it's more than a sound, sing my praise is a shout, my praise is a shout, that brings every go down, come on, as long as I'm breathing, if you got a reason, come on, Gotta get excited in this place this morning. Oh, we praise your name. Come on, can we sing this part together? I praise, I praise because you're sovereign. Praise because you reign. Come on, praise because you rose and defeated. Yes, he did. I praise because you're faithful. Praise because you're true. Praise because there's nobody praise. Come on, we'll praise because he's sovereign. Oh, praise because you reign. Praise cause you rose and defeated the grave. I praise cause you're faithful. Praise cause you're true. Praise cause there's nobody greater than you. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. Come on, give him praise. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. Everybody. 
and be glad in it. And this is where I believe that you are more than enough, more than enough for me. As you are faithful to your promise, you are strong when I am weak. Standing in your presence, I have everything I need. Raise it up. The joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Yes, it is. The joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Oh, my soul, oh, my soul, bless his name. All that is within me, say. The joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord is my strength.
the joy of the Lord is my It's more than a feeling. The joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord is my It is your strength, oh my soul, oh my soul. Bless his name, all that is within me say. Oh my soul, bless his name, all that is
before you.
you, Jesus. You know, when Jesus rode into Jerusalem on that donkey, they all worshipped him. They all worshipped him. They all praised him. And they didn't even know that he was going to die on the cross seven days later. And so let us worship him this morning. Oh, you're so great to be praised. Oh, you're so great. You're so great. Oh, to be praised. Thank you, Jesus.
worship you, Lord. Come on, lift your hands in this place.
Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Come on, He is worthy. He is worthy. Come on, give Him some praise in this place, church. Oh, Hosanna, Hosanna. Oh. in this place right now. Just worship the King. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. It's Jesus Christ, the King. Jesus Christ, the Prince of 
Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. He is the King of kings and Lord of lords. Come on, give him some praise. Give him some glory. Give him honor. He is worthy of all honor. He is worthy of all praise. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Palm Sunday. We would have so loved to have been there, Lord, just to see that procession. you loved us so much that you sent him to die on the cross for us but he did not just die, he rose from the dead conquering sin conquering death fear, shame, doubt lack and whatever we could put in he died for it and we rejoice today we are so thankful and we are so grateful and we give you all the glory Lord and we give you all the praise. Can we just give the Lord a hand clap and praise him here this morning? Come on. Come on. Thank you, Jesus, for your salvation. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We could have just gone on in worship, but I wanted, my wife, I wanted to give her plenty of time to uh, minister the word. Just before you sit down, greet at least three people and tell them he is risen. That he is risen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Just so thankful to be in the house of the Lord, to see so many of you here. Um, God is so good. Can we just give a big round of applause to those watching on live stream? We've got guys watching from Portugal and Phoenix and all over. Yesterday I went on to a website just to see how many people and who's the traffic that we've seen. And I want to tell you, we've got people watching from all over the world, uh, India, Pakistan, uh, I mean, Australia, New Zealand, Germany, uh, Ukraine, Russia. Um, 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 I said Germany, Italy, um, Belarus. There was one in the Greece. I mean, all over. I mean, God is doing something. And I really believe that as we continue to um, press in in get in the word and get in the message eight, the lives are being changed that's two, a, two amens I said lives are being changed and lives are being transformed amen well it's so good to be in the house of the Lord today I, I'm just um, blessed to you know yesterday I'm just so grateful just looking back at this year already and just to see what the Lord has done uh, we were so blessed last week with um, Kamalita and Andrew being with us. And uh, I know the business people were blessed. And um, praise God, they made their first million this week. Glory to God. <laughs> but um, we're just really, just I, I think for me, overwhelmed by what the Father is doing. And, and we really stand back. And we're just stewarding what He wants to do. And, and I, I, I really want to say this morning, not to spectate, you know, jump in. I want to tell you, if you are looking for a local church, if you're visiting us for the first time and you've never been to church or you have and you're looking for somewhere, I want to tell you, this is a great house. I said, this is a great house. 
where you'll be loved and taken care of. If you're visiting us from other churches, God bless you. How many visitors do we have today? Put your hands up if you're visiting us for the first time. This is your first time visit. <laughs> Can we give these guys a big applause? Welcome. Thank you so much. Of all the places you could have gone today, you came here. We say thank you for that. Um, I'm going to take the offering. Are you ready to give? Praise God. I said, are you ready to give? You know, the word says give and it will come back to you, pressed down, shaken together, running over. And I really want to challenge you in your giving this year. You know, God wants to get something to you in order to get something through you. Because there's a lot of work to be done. And as we heard last week, you know what? It's going to take money to do what we need to do. He owns a cattle on a thousand hills. And he wants you to be blessed in such a way so you can be a blessing. And I want to challenge you to really just, um, this year of the supernatural, I believe if you begin to sow supernaturally, you're going to reap supernaturally. I'll say that again. If you begin to sow supernaturally, you're going to reap supernaturally. I'm going to tell you, I, 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 we were blessed last week. Someone just said, Pastor, I'm believing for a holiday. And I know you guys are going away and believing for that too. And I just want to bless you with this. And the first thing I did, I went and paid off some of the balance of a holiday. No, I didn't. Do you know what I did? I thought, right, I, I, I sowed a seed to somebody who was here. I said, I blessed somebody. And then the remainder of it, I said, right, I'm going to sow it into good soil. Where should I sow this? And God showed me where I needed to sow it. So I'm believing for a harvest. Amen. Because I thought, if I want to see supernatural harvest, I've got to give supernaturally. And it was a good amount. It was a significant amount. I could have paid off a lot of my holiday, praise the Lord. I could have done a lot with it. But I want to tell you, if you haven't got enough to meet your need, what do you do? Sow a seed. And I just want to encourage you in this church, you know, to be cheerful givers. And if you're here and you're struggling and you need help with food, you need help with whatever it might be, come and see us. We have a great pastoral care team and a great storehouse that provides food, that provides financial need um, to those in need. You know, if you know anybody who needs help, this is why the church needs to be prosperous. So we can meet the needs of others. And so if you've got your tithes and your offerings, I want you to take them out right now. Hallelujah. The envelopes are on your seats. And I'm just going to pray over the offering and just give the announcements. Father, we thank you. Father, for the, this is the year of supernatural increase. And I pray that over every faithful giver, faithful tither, Father, I thank you for increase. I thank you for multiplication. I thank you, Lord, for promotions, new jobs. Can somebody say amen? amen? Amen. I thank you for unexpected resources and finances coming to your house, coming through your people for such a time as this. We thank you, Lord, that you said go into all the world and preach the gospel. And Father, I thank you as the finances come in. We will continue to do that and see lives transformed and changed in your name. And everybody said Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap. I, I'm so excited um, next week. Um, and part of your giving helps us to do that, helps us to hire the Friars Walk next week. We're going to be in Friars Walk next Sunday, next Saturday, sorry, Good Friday, next Friday at 2 p.m. We're going to be getting there. I want you to get there early because every year that we have done this, we have seen people come into the church. We've seen salvation. We've seen the fruit of it. And, and this, this year, uh, we've got Nyla and some of the team doing a drama. Uh, praise God. Come on, let's give it up for Nyla and the guys. Uh, we're going to have our, our team, our musicians and our band and our singers. And we're just going to go out there and, and preach the gospel. Amen. And, and I mean, one of the things we're going to do is prepare the ground this week. So on Wednesday... Okay, we usually pray here every week, 6 till 7, uh, but we're going to be going into Friars Walk from 6 till 7, and we're going to pray. <laughs> we're going to prepare the grain. Now, don't bring no money for shopping, okay? okay. Shops are closed at 6, all right? Um, and we're going to be praying through that whole area strategically. And I want to tell you, the times that we've done this, we have seen the most fruitful time, haven't we, Mike? The fruit, most fruitful time in seeing that. So next week at 2 o'clock, get there early, get there about half one. 
next week at 2 p.m., okay? Come along, just be a part of it. I think the, the more of us there, the more representing the king, amen? Because we're representing the king's church, his, his church, amen? And so I, I really want you to, to really just take that time at your calendar on Friday. Most of us will be off work, and we'll be there for about an hour or so. And I really believe we're going to see lives changed, amen? And you could start praying today. Start praying for this weekend. And then Sunday, we have, you know, we have some drama on Sunday morning. I'll be preaching the gospel. Hallelujah. And we and we got the kids doing their thing. Oh, man. We got um, Pastor Mike's going to be breakdancing and body popping. And, uh, oh, yeah. I know I've canceled now. <laughs> he went. <laughs> um, praise the Lord. And so next Sunday, invite somebody, you know. There's a couple of times in the year, Christmas and Easter, where people actually will say, yeah, I might go to church. And you might have been inviting people for a long time. But I encourage you to um, invite them along. Invite them next week because it's going to be an amazing weekend. Well, my wife said, she said, honey, I need, I need an hour to minister today. So I said, I'm going to give you an hour, honey. Um, because she's, we've been in a series of the supernatural. And, um, you know, she's been talking about angels and demons and, and just really opening things up, you know, it's really important that the word says people perish for the lack of knowledge, okay? And we've got to get taught the word of God that's going to help us live in the supernatural this year. Next week, I'm going to be, super, I'm going to be talking about supernatural results through prayer. And God has been really speaking to me about prayer. We had an amazing time um, for all night prayer on Friday night. Come on, somebody give the Lord a hand clap. I mean from, we said all night prayer with from 10 o'clock till 2 a.m. And um, we went on a little bit over, but it was great. And I mean, we, we, some people fell asleep. and um, No, no. <laughs> some people had naps in between, but it was great. And we really felt there was a major shift. And so we encourage you for the next one that's going to be happening. Look out for the dates of that. But I'm just going to hand the, the stage over to my wife. And she's going to come and minister. Can you stand and give a big round of applause to Pastor Donna as she comes and teaches us the word? And, amen. Praise the Lord. Bless you, honey. Praise God. You may be seated. Thank you, Lord. I tell you, the presence of God in this place is incredible. Amen. And you know, because you came ready, you came ready to worship this morning. And we will continue to worship after this message has been ministered. Because I believe you will want to worship once this message is being ministered, because we serve a mighty, incredible God, and he has prepared everything. He truly is the Alpha and Omega, and you know, everything in between. It's a little bit chaotic in the world right now, but he truly is the Alpha and Omega, and he has taken care of the beginning, he's taken care of the end, and he's taken care of everything in between. Amen? And that means in your life as well. Everything is taken care of. And I started out the other week saying, you are not alone. Amen. And that's not a Michael Jackson song, by the way. You truly are not alone. And when we understand everything that God has put in place for us, then there's comfort in that. Because you could be going through situations and circumstances that are not pleasant right now. But when you understand that there's a whole host of heavenly hosts and angelic warriors fighting on your behalf, sent by the Father, then that will bring you comfort. And you think, well, how does that apply to my situation where there's strife in my house and where, you know, um, people are away from the Lord, my family, my husband, my wife, my children... Because when we pray, God sends those angelic warriors on our behalf to bring messages, to protect, to bring safely through a situation. For instance, a lost loved one. When you pray, the Lord releases those angels to protect them, to bring them safely in an area where if you hadn't have prayed, they might not have got through there safely. So there are things going on in the unseen realm that we are just not aware of. But I want to bring it right here so we understand what's happening because it's the year of the supernatural. Hallelujah. All right, you ready? So I'm going to go over a little bit because if you remember when I ministered this, I couldn't find my iPad. And then last week, so I had my little phone, which was really difficult preaching from. 
Then last week, Carmelita, I mean, there was a gift of God in the house. We could not just carry on, could we? So I was meant to minister this last week, but as it happened, I forgot my glasses. So this week, guess what? I have my iPad and I have my glasses. Hey! So we're going to get the message. Glory to God. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We thank you in this place right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your presence in this place. We thank you for the glory in this house right now. We thank you for the ministering angels that are around and about. Have your way. Give us ears to hear. Give us eyes to see in the supernatural, in the spiritual realms this morning. Father, we thank you that we are new creations. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And we thank you, Father, whatever state we're in right now, that you have a future and a destiny and a plan for us. And you haven't left us as orphans. You've given us your Holy Spirit, but you've also assigned angelic warriors to make straight, crooked paths straight and to protect us in every endeavor that we do. So, Father, we thank you in this place right now. Lord, speak to us all, I pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Oh, excuse me. Oh, we're translated in Portuguese at the moment, so I have to speak slow. And Roma. Yes, come on. Let's give our Roma community a big round of applause. Welcome, welcome. It's so good to see you all. Praise God. God is doing a work in this city, right? I want to be part of this work. Okay, Linda speak Portuguese and Roma, and then, praise God, you never know. On the day of Pentecost, they had divers' tongues, which meant they could speak and communicate with other people in different regions with different dialects. That was the tongues they had on the day of Pentecost. You never know. I have heard of those stories. It's the year of the supernatural. Amen? So praise God. Bless you guys. Okay, we're talking about angels and demons. Woohoo! Come on. Heaven is full. The earth is full of angels and demons. Praise God we can't see everything because we probably wouldn't come out of our house if we could see everything. I'm not kidding. Okay, the year of the supernatural, angels and demons. And I said, angels are holy, they are mighty, they are the elect. That's what the word of God describes them as. They are prevalent throughout the scriptures from Genesis to Revelation. Angels are created by God and are sometimes referred to in scripture as the sons of God. They play a huge role in the end of days. And I want to read this scripture, Colossians 1, 16 to 18. For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things consist, and he is the head of the body. So we're talking about Jesus here. The church who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have the preeminence. Hallelujah. Who or what are angels? They are heavenly beings that protect and bring messages to the people of the earth, primarily the children of God. And here's the scripture, Hebrews 1 verse 14. This is in the New Living Translation. Therefore, angels are only servants, spirits sent to care for people who will inherit salvation. In the New King James, this should encourage you. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for those who will inherit salvation? Amen. Again, we are not alone in this Christian walk. And sometimes we feel we've been alone and it's a struggle. But you know what? It just takes a moment for you to look up and say, thank you, Father. Thank you, God, for everything you released to help me in this walk, to overcome the works of darkness. Okay, let's move on. Psalm 103, 20 to 23. Bless the Lord, you his angels, who excel in strength. 
angels are strong, who do his word, heeding the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all you his hosts, you ministers of his who do his pleasure. Okay, I'm reading through these scriptures because obviously there was a lot I said a couple of weeks ago. Matthew 28, 2 to 6. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the, of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. His countenance was like lightning and his clothing as white as snow. And the guard shook for fear of him and became like dead men. But the angel answered and said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen as he said. Praise God. I love that scripture. Do you know why? Because that is the moment of resurrection. And the angels were involved. But also in the garden of Gethsemane before Jesus went to his death, an angel came, it said, and strengthened him. Angels were involved in Jesus' ministry. And in fact, they probably stood back because there was a lot of stuff they didn't realize that was going on. You see, when the angel came to strengthen him, Jesus, he knew that Jesus needed strengthening, which is really incredible because that means that angels have emotions. Because when they can see something, when they saw Jesus, the Son of God, it says he was anguished. He was distressed in the garden. He was so distressed that beads of sweat, beads of, sorry, blood dripped from his forehead as if it was sweat. They saw the anguish and they came and strengthened him. Even when he did his 40-day fast in the wilderness, you know, the enemy came and tempted him for 40 days. I kind of had a revelation of that the other night. I don't know why. I thought, you know where he, the devil comes and he tempts him? And I've always thought it was kind of at the end of the 40 days. But the word of God says he tempted him for 40 days. I don't know. Maybe that was just my personal revelation. But... At the end of it, angels came and brought him food. The angels are watching. They know what's going on. Isn't that pretty incredible? Okay, so there are five classes of angels that are specifically referred to in the Word of God. They're the cherubim. They're the seraphim. They're the living creatures. They're the archangels, which most of us are familiar with, and they are the angels. And I quickly give you a few scriptures concerning them all. The cherubim. Well, they're the image that covers the Ark of the Covenant. Remember, if you go back and have a look, they're the image that cover one that side, one that side, over the Ark of the Covenant. Genesis 3, 24. So he drove out the man and he placed cherubim at the east of the Garden of Eden and a flaming sword which turned every way to guard the way to the Tree of Life. Wow, yeah. Cherubim are highly significant, highly holy. <laughs> highly holy. Are you highly holy today? Well, the cherubim are highly holy. I mean, they're significant angels. They're part of the angelic host, and they are very significant. Okay? One of the, the highest form, because they were over God's word. He could have put any old angel over his word to protect it. Now, obviously, it was just the image of the cherubim. But that was highly significant over the word of God, the commandments, the Ten Commandments in the Ark of the Covenant. Amen? The Ark of the Covenant, that if anybody touched it, they would die. It was so holy. And he put the cherubim, or he gave instructions for the cherubim to be built over the Ark. You can also find cherubim in Ezekiel 10. This is for your notes. And in Ezekiel 28 describing Lucifer, and we'll get to that in a bit. Okay, the seraphim, Isaiah 6, verse 1 to 3, in the New King James Version. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. I love that song, Ron Canoli. Above it stood seraphim. Each one had six wings, and two he covered his face, Two, he covered his feet, 
and with two he flew. Wow. And one cried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Wow. That's the seraphim. Then we have, which is probably the kind of strangest things we can imagine, are the living creatures. And they're described again in Ezekiel 10. And in Ezekiel 10, they're called wheels. Remember the wheels with eyes all around and they go this way, that way. And you know, they go this way, that way. If you read in Ezekiel, according to the glory, they move with the glory. Isn't that incredible? Everything is in place, is created for a purpose and on purpose. The cherubim guard, they're flaming swords. They are the highest rank. They are so holy. The seraphim worship him. And they say all around the throne. And the living creatures, they go where the glory goes. Revelation 4, 6 to 11. Before the throne, there was a sea of glass like crystal. And in the midst of the throne and around the throne were four living creatures full of eyes in front and in back. I mean, our finite minds struggle with this kind of information, but it's in the Word of God, and God created them. The first living creature was like a lion, the second living creature like a calf, the third living creature had a face like a man, and the fourth living creature was like a flying eagle. The four living creatures, each having six wings, were full of eyes around and within. And they did not rest day or night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne saying, you are worthy, O Lord, to receive the glory and honor and power for you created all things and by your will they exist and were created. Isn't this just amazing? I mean, how often do we take time to look at this stuff? Now, I will say, and I said it the first time, when we talk about angels, they are not to be worshipped. They are created. They are created beings. And it's the same way, and I'll say it again, with uh, Mary, the mother of Jesus. Because in Catholicism, Mary is highly significant, which is correct. But what's not correct is the worship of Mary, because there's only one that we worship. And it's the same with angels. Angels are incredible. And as we go on and we'll read a little bit more, magnificent. Thank you, God, for these incredible creatures. They are just, you know, whoa. But they're not to be worshipped. They are ministers of God to help the sons and daughters of God on earth. That's what they're for, not to worship. And in fact, when we worship, they're astounded and they listen to us worshipping. And I don't know if anybody has ever seen those videos. You can get them where you can hear angels singing. Where the worship has been so reverential and holy. You feel you're at the throne room of God. And then you can hear angels. And many people have not only heard them, but they've seen angels. And I'll read the scripture in a moment of entertaining angels and not even realizing. But also you've seen them in their angelic form, in their majesty. And I want to say this also. Every account of angels in the word of God describe them as being male. So they're not female, they are male. Angels are masculine, they are male in every form. The cherubim, seraphim, living creatures, archangels, and angels are male, masculine. Hallelujah. Okay, so now we got the archangels, which most of us are pretty familiar with. Michael, the warrior angel, chief protector over Israel. That's his huge assignment. Daniel 10 verse 13 in the New King James Version. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days. And behold, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me. For I had been left alone there with the kings of Persia. And when it says there, and one of the chief princes, we know there's more than one archangel. 
Jude verse 1 to 9. Yet Michael the archangel, in contending with the devil, when he disputed about the body of Moses, dared not bring against him a reviling accusation, but said, the Lord rebuke you. So this is the archangel Michael when he had to deal with the devil himself. He said, the Lord rebuke you, meaning God, I stand here in the authority of God rebuking you. Okay, 1 Thessalonians 4, 15 to 16. I'm going somewhere, Are you all with me? Okay, Woo, come on now. 1 Thessalonians 4, 15 to 16, New King James Vision. For the Lord himself, this is the beautiful scripture. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Woo! Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. And I want to say the angels, come on, if you're going to clap, hallelujah. I know there's all manner of stuff going on, but the rapture is real. It's the next prophetic thing on God's calendar to happen. Amen. And I am going in the rapture with or without you. Are you coming with me? Yes. Amen. Some of you don't sound so sure. Are you coming with me in the rapture? Amen. Because I know some people don't think it's going to be, you know, the beginning of the tribulation. Well, carry on and go through the tribulation. I shall not. Okay? Because I was not born to go through that. We were born to be caught up and taken and have our home at the marriage supper of the Lamb in Revelation 19. Hallelujah. Where we'll, amen. Come on. And at the end of that, when the seven years are over, it says we come with him. The saints come with him. And we will come at the end of that seven-year tribulation. And there will be that battle of Armageddon and the thousand-year millennial reign and all that glorious stuff. Listen, we serve a supernatural God. And if right now you're thinking, what oh, is she talking about? Don't worry about it. It's all prepared for you because he's the Alpha and Omega and he has prepared it. Our job is to love the Lord thy God with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our soul. Amen? And it's to do what he's called us to do. And in between, if you can study this stuff, praise God, because it helps you understand you're not alone and there's more fighting in this spiritual realm right now because of what's taking place on earth. But our first and foremost call is not to know about this, that, and the other, is to worship Jesus Christ and him only. Amen? And so if anything you get from this message this morning, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. Amen? Serve him unashamedly because he's coming back to get us and it's going to be glorious. Amen? So I love that scripture. It's so good. So then Gabriel... Now, he's a messenger angel. We know him as an archangel, but there's actually no scripture in the word of God that calls him an archangel. Now, many of you will be aware of the book of Enoch, which is another book that describes angelic and demonic um, beings. Um, and it's not the inspired word of God, but it is a pretty, it's an ancient book. Um, and many Jews study that book, so they're aware of all this. But in the book of Enoch, it describes Gabriel as being an archangel, but we don't find that in Scripture. But we kind of know him as being one of the, the top dogs, right? Well, because this is what it says. In Luke 1 verse 19, New King James Vision, And the angel answered and said to him, I am Gabriel, who stands in the presence of God and was sent to speak to you and bring you these glad tidings. Daniel 9, 21 to 22. Yes, while I was speaking in prayer, the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, reached me about the time of the evening offering. And he informed me and talked with me and said, Oh, Daniel, I have come now forth. I have now come forth to give you skill to understand. And I want to say this about Gabriel. Every account when you read about Gabriel, even when he appeared to Mary, he had to say, Fear not. He had come from standing in the presence of the Lord. Remember Moses when he was in the presence of the Lord at Mount Sinai getting the Ten Commandments? He had to put 
When he came down, the glory of the Lord was so heavy upon him that nobody could look at him. So he had to put that shawl over his face so that he could communicate with, with the children of Israel. So Gabriel, standing in the presence of the Lord, and in fact, Daniel in his account says, I felt ill. All my, all my strength went away from me. I could hardly stand up. And the angel had to touch him to give him strength again because Gabriel stands in the presence of the Lord. Well, if you're the messenger angel, you probably need to be quite close to hear the message. Okay, lighten up, people. Come on. Lighten up. If somebody's going to tell you a message, there's no point you being somewhere else, is it? You have to be close. And so Gabriel stands very close to God's throne, and he brings messages. Hallelujah. Okay. Now, angels, they do God's bidding, not ours. As we pray to the Lord, he is the one that dispatches his angels. And I mentioned this scripture, but I didn't give you the reference last time. Matthew 26, 53. This is Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, and he says, He's saying to his accusers, and then they've all come with clubs and spears ready to arrest him. And he says, or do you think that I cannot now pray to my father, and he will provide me with more than 12 legions of angels? And the point is that they do God's bidding, not ours. Even Jesus said, don't you think I could ask my father and he will send? He didn't say I could summon demons now. Summon demons, excuse me, I'll get to that in a bit. He, I could summon angels. He didn't say that. He said, don't you think I could ask my father? And it's really important for us because I said before, I had made that mistake thinking, angels, come and do this. Angels, come and do that. I call you in the name of Jesus, angels. But it's not. It's the Father that dispatches them. They are messengers. They are helpers. They are protectors. But they are sent by God to help and assist the children of God, which is us. And even Jesus never presumed to speak to them directly. He said about his father sending them. Okay, we can ask and pray that God does this. And we say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray you would dispatch your ministering angels. And I have done that lots of times. And of course, we know the famous Psalm 91. We all love Psalm 91. Amen, because what do the angels do? God, it says, he gives his angels charge concerning us. Who gives his angels charge concerning us? God gives his angels charge over us. Look after my children. Make sure they're well. Watch what they're doing. Now, let me just say this. You have to be in the will of God. Because many of you might be like, yeah, well, that didn't happen for me. I just want to say to you, stay in the will of God. Be obedient to what God calls you to do. Because when you step outside, God's hands comes off. And you wonder why bad things happen and this happens and that happens. And sometimes we could blame God for it. It's not God's doing it's not God's fault. If you stay in the will of God, you listen to him, you do what he does, you love what he loves, you hate what he hates, then everything that has been provided for in the word of God will come to you. It will. But when you make your own decisions and you say, well, okay, God, I know you're telling me to do that, but I'm going to do this, then sometimes... I would say you're on your own, but you're never on your own because he's there and the Holy Spirit inside of, is inside of you. But it grieves the Holy Spirit when you're doing things you know you shouldn't be doing. And the thing is, there's no condemnation in Christ, which is the most amazing thing. There's conviction, and he'll convict you and convict you. But that voice, honestly, if you're determined to do your own thing, that voice will get quieter and quieter and quieter. And it says your conscience becomes seared. You will not even hear the holiness and the word of God 
you will not even take note of the Holy Spirit. And that's the importance of continually praying for backsliders, praying for people who are away from God, praying for your loved ones, because the prayers of the saints availeth much. And when you pray, God dispatches angels and avoid stuff that we will never know till we get to heaven. So you see why it's all connected. Amen. And if we got any backsliders in the house today, praise God, today's your day. Amen. You getting uncomfortable? Glory. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now I also said in the Old Testament, the angel of the Lord. It wasn't just an ordinary angel. And many accounts say the angel of the Lord. Well, the angel of the Lord was God come down on earth. Many people believe it was Jesus as the angel of the Lord that would come down and be with the people. Listen to this in Exodus 3, 2 to 4, Moses and the burning bush. And the angel of the Lord uh, appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of a bush. So he looked, and behold, the bush was burning with fire, but the bush was not consumed. Then Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush does not burn. So when the Lord saw that he turned aside to look, God called to him from the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses, and he said, here I am. That's the angel of the Lord. In Exodus 14 to 19, the angel of the Lord appears as a pillar of fire at night and a pillar of cloud by day. Again, protecting the children of Israel. I know it's a lot of scripture, but it's good, right? Just jot it down because then you got it. Exodus 14, 19. And the angel of God who went before the camp of Israel moved and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud went from before them and stood behind them. So it wasn't two. He would go this way. He would go that way. And that is described the angel of the Lord. But of course, in the New Testament, Jesus was manifested. See, in the Old Testament, you saw God, you're dead. You even touched the Ark of the Covenant, the presence of God, which they described the presence of God was in the Ark of the Covenant, covered by the cherubim, who was most holy. You even touched that, you're dead. So that was the only way as the angel of the Lord, he himself would come and see his people on those occasions. But in the New Testament, who came? Jesus, amen. And he could only come in the form of man. There was no other way for him to be born. Of course, there was no other way to, you know, uh, uh, um, that our sins could be forgiven other than Jesus Christ coming to earth as a man and being holy and being perfect. And so, uh, in Psalm 8, some of you might have read, and it also talks about it in Hebrews 12, where it says Jesus had to be made lower than the angels. He was a little lower than the angels. Well, the only reason he was a little lower than the angels was because he had to be born a man. He came as the son of man. When he rose from the dead, received his glorified body again, he took his rightful place at the right-hand side of the Father. Amen? So it was for a period. Okay, still here? All right, we are going somewhere. Woo! Amen. Come on now. Genesis. Oh, okay. Angels' habitation. So where do these angels live? Okay, most of us would know the answer to that, but I want to give a scripture to it. Angels' habitation. They live in heaven, but are also active on the earth. They have a significant role when it comes to the saints. Oh. Eyes gone off. Oh, I'm back on. Thank you. They have a significant role when it comes to the saints. They are messengers between heaven and earth. Genesis 28 verse 12. This is Jacob from the New King James Version. Then he dreamed, and behold, a ladder was set up on earth, and its top reached to heaven, and there the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. Hallelujah. And you know what? I know 
Certain places you go, you sense the holiness of God. Has anybody ever been somewhere? Well, even in this house, sometimes the presence of God. And we will say, there's an open heaven. You can just sense the open heaven, which means you basically can ask God anything. His presence is there. You can feel it. You're consumed. You can hardly move. You can sense the glory and the weight. And the angels are back and forth. And we have seen so many angels in this place. There have been so many angels seen in this house, which has been amazing. Why? Because when the sons and daughters of God worship, and there's holiness, and, and, and just that, that intense worship to God with no distractions, they're there, and they're watching, and they're joining in. Hebrews 13.1, and this is what I said, you could have entertained an angel unawares. Let brotherly love continue. Do not forget to entertain strangers, for by doing so, some have unwittingly entertained angels. Has anybody ever experienced that here? Yeah? Okay, we won't all think you're weird. It's fine. Stick your hand up. Come on. It marks you. I mean, Pastor and I once, years ago, isn't it? We thought we saw an angel. We still don't know. Probably know when we get to heaven. Yeah? We think it was. I'm positive it was because he was there one minute and gone the next. And he was a homeless person. And we just, um, sorry? We took him to the house. That's right. Um, so this was when we first got born again, or I was backslidden. You know, he got born again. Uh, we, so we were still living together. Okay. So we understand, guys. Right? But what did we do? We stopped living together. Okay, it was, just, it was just a matter of logistics. He gets born again. I was backslidden. I rededicate my life to the Lord. Then we're like, right, we got one house. What are we going to do? So then I had to move out. And that's exactly what I did. I didn't stay there and go, oh, we can't afford it. Well, you know, we won't sleep together. You can have that bedroom. I'll have that bedroom and we'll work it out. Okay, Glory. Again, this is walking in the will of God, right? You're going to want to have heavenly hosts helping and stuff like that. Get into the will of God. <laughs> yes, come on. I mean, I don't know why it needs to be said, but honestly, as a born-again believer, you should not be having sex outside of marriage. I'll just say it, okay? Any kind of sex. Not even sex on your own. You know what I mean. Some of you are going, sex on my own. Don't even think about it. If you don't know what I'm talking about, don't think about it. Okay. You should not be doing it. Okay. For the sanctity of marriage. It is beautiful in marriage. There's a reason. We joke about it, but there's a reason. There's a reason why everything is happening the way it is because Satan likes to pervert and destroy humans. And when you dabble in this stuff and when you're messed up all here and you've got connected to this person, that person, the other person. There's so much emotional baggage that goes with that. And God doesn't want us to be in that state. But praise God, there is healing at the foot of the cross. And he comes to cleanse us from all that stuff. Amen? Amen. Come on. Praise the Lord. Okay. Why am I talking about that? I don't know. Right. We're <laughs> well, I'm just lightening you up. At least you're smiling. Um, and don't cough because I think it's a demon. So just don't <laughs> cough. And, oh, my God, this is embarrassing. I mean, really, in this church, you can't do anything, can you? You can't smile. You can't cough because I think you're guilty. <laughs> God is so good. Okay, so we thought we see this homeless guy. We just got born again, and we see this guy, and we're living together. And uh, we're like, we just knew we had to take him home. I mean, it's quite funny because we picked him up in Cardiff and we took him to Newport. I really hope he wanted to go to Newport because he was in Cardiff at the train station. And we're like, come on. And we took him. We, well, you washed him and, and bathed him and we fed him, gave him a, a, the bed for the night. And the next day he got up. He said, thank you very much. He gave us some of these coins that we don't even know. They were just these amazing coins. And he said, thank you. And he walked up the street and we looked and he was gone. So I don't know. I don't know. 
Sometimes God does these things, and it's almost like a test of the heart as well to see what you will do, whether you'll inconvenience yourself. You know, other people where, you know, they, they have averted car accidents, and they know there's been an angel right in front of them. Or an angel has come and rescued them on the side of the road. Or, you know, if you've been on your own, they've led you somewhere. Well, we know that is true accounts that happen in the Word of God. It's not just stuff we make up. It's all in the Word of God. And you can see the angels active in those ways. Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay, so um, Hebrews 1.4, I've said that. Um, oh, where am I now? Okay, so we talked about prayer activating the angels. Remember that? And I won't go through that whole story right now, but it's in Acts 12, verse 1 to 11. And it's the account of Peter. And the church is praying for Peter. Remember, they, Herod arrests him because he's just trying to prove a point. He's already killed James. Um, and now he's going after Peter. And he arrests him and, and he puts him in prison, but right down in the dungeon. So there's so many guards around. At each step, there is no way he could escape in the natural. But the church prayed. And when the church prays, supernatural things happen. Amen? That's why we must pray. That's why when we came together Friday night, it was amazing. Is it hard, like one, two o'clock? Yes, of course it is. But it's a sacrifice. Remember in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus said to the disciples, pray for one hour that you may not fall into temptation. There was a reason why he told them to pray. It was for their sake. It wasn't actually even for Jesus' sake because he knew what he had to do. But it was so they wouldn't fall into temptation. And of course, they were so, it says in one translation, they were heavy and weary because just before that, Jesus had told them, look, I'm going. This is going to happen. You won't see me. And they're like, what are you saying, Lord? We love you. What are you saying? And so they were heavy and weary with the load of it. But he said, pray, don't grow weary. And it's so easy for us. How many of you have grown weary in prayer? Be honest now. That should be kind of technically the majority of us. You pray and you fall asleep. Yeah, I do all the time. And then I wake up, oh, shabba you know. Anybody else, you shabba your way out of sleeping? Or I do it in my head and I'm gone. But it, it's so important. Why? That we won't fall into temptation. Prayer is key. But what prayer also does, as we saw in this situation, it caused the angels, God sent the angel on assignment to go and release Peter from the deepest, darkest pit. And remember we read that Peter was sleeping which means that even in the midst of trouble, you can have peace. You can have perfect peace in the midst. Amen? However far down, however many locks are on you. Because when you read that story, there was no way in the natural he would ever escape. He was bound for a start. He had guards watching him at the top, in the inner prison, and actually in the room with him. He was bound. There was no way of escape. Yet he was sleeping because he had Peace, perfect peace, casts out all fear, or love actually, but love and peace, it, it, you just don't fear when you have the peace of God. And the angel literally had to strike Peter to wake him up. And then he woke him up, and we know the story. He goes to the house where all the church is praying. Little Rhoda answers the door and is like, oh, my gosh, it's Peter. Goes back, tells them all, Peter's at the door. They do not believe her. Now, they're praying, they get the answer to the prayer, and they don't believe her. And I want to encourage you, when you get the answer to the prayer, you believe it, you receive it, you accept it. Amen? Amen. Same way with Jesus at the tomb, when Jesus rose from the dead. Hallelujah. Mary Magdalene and all the women were there. Not girl power or anything like that. We're not that in this church. But I just find it amazing. And it was the guys who didn't believe. The 11 apostles, apostles, which it says in the word of God that they will have thrones the, 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 and they will rule the 12 tribes of Israel and all that stuff when you get to heaven. They have a significant role, yet they didn't believe. 
Mary Magdalene believed straight away. I mean, she was nervous, but she believed. Angels were there. Isn't that amazing? Angels were part and parcel of all that. Hallelujah. And, and why am I saying that? That's right, I just remembered. Because she saw answer, oh my goodness, he's risen from the dead. She goes to tell them, and they didn't believe. And it's a real lesson for us all. We must believe. Belief and faith, that's what it is. That's why we're here. You have to believe and trust in the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your mind. You have to believe. Because what, everything that's happening out there, it steals from you. And it makes you doubt. You have to come back to the word of God. Come back to your first love. Say, Father, here I am. Here I am. And have perfect peace in the craziest of situations. Amen. All right. So we know. Also, we go back to Daniel 9, verse 20 to 24. This is Daniel. Now, while I was speaking, praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel, and presenting my supplication before the Lord my God for the holy mountain of my God, yes, while I was speaking in prayer, the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, reached me about the time of the evening offering. And he informed me and talked with me and said, Oh, Daniel, I have now come forth to give you skill to understand. At the beginning of your supplication, the command went out, and I have come to tell you, for you are greatly loved, beloved. Therefore, consider the matter and understand the vision. Don't stop praying. It's classic. Do not stop praying. Your answer is on the way. That is not a cop-out. That is not a, oh, yeah, yeah. Your answer is on the way. Do not lose faith. Do not stop praying. There's some spiritual realms up there. There's some battles taking place, which I'll go into in a moment, that takes time for messages to get to us on earth. That's, that's basically it. It's a supernatural realm we live in, right? So it takes time. So don't give up. Don't just say, oh, well, that's it. Don't let negative stuff come out of your mouth. Keep speaking and speaking and speaking the word and giving praise to God. Amen? Amen. So they bring or they're responsible for messages, for answers, for understanding. They bring judgments. Book of Revelation, you just got to read it. They actually bring death, the angel of death in Egypt. We think, oh, angels bringing death. Yes, God uses them for that too, for judgment. And also, which I never realized, in Acts 12, 21 to 23, you can write this down. Herod is struck by an angel. I'd never known that before. So an angel killed Herod, basically. Okay, you can read that. Acts 12, 21 to 23. Isn't that amazing? See, when you start studying these things, you see, you're like, whoa. So that's what angels do. That's what they're responsible for. They're also responsible. Now, they don't heal people, but they assist God in the healing of people. Uh, the man healed at the pool of Bethesda, Bethesda. There was an angel, it says, that stirred the water. They do God's bidding. So they're also protectors. 2 Kings 6, 16 to 17. So he answered, do not fear for the, oh, this is the scripture we love. For those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray Open his eyes that he may see. This was his servant, Elisha's servant. Then the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. Hallelujah. Isn't that pretty awesome? All right. That was all angels. Praise the Lord. Week two, demons. <laughs> hate them hate them okay but listen we got good news in this house okay there is such good news okay 1 john 3 8 he who sins is of the devil for the devil is sin from the beginning for this purpose the son of god was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil and praise god that's exactly what he did amen Amen. Okay. So if we're going to talk about demons, we better, oops, sorry, we better talk about the person or the one who is kind of the head of them, which is Lucifer. Okay. 
You're not getting the joke. All right, we overcome him. Ezekiel 28, 12 to 15. And many of you will know these scriptures. And this is what it says about Lucifer. You were the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. So he was there at the very beginning. Every precious stone was your covering, the sardius, topaz, and diamond, beryl, onyx, and jasper, sapphire, turquoise, and emerald with gold. The workmanship of your timbrels and pipes was prepared for you on the day you were created. We know he was the angel of worship. You were the anointed cherub who covers. That's so significant. That's who Saint Lucifer was. He was created. He was the anointed cherub, the highest cherub who covers. And again, we have those cherubs covering the presence of God in the form of the Ark of the Covenant. You were anointed cherub who covers. I established you. You were on the holy mountain of God. You walked back and forth in the midst of the fiery stones. You were perfect in your ways from the day you were created till iniquity was found in you. And I want to say with music, again, that is something we have to be so careful what we listen to. And I know thinking, God, I only came to church for a feel-good message. You came to the wrong church, okay? <laughs> that will never happen here. Um, because we don't want to just butter things up and say it's okay. You, can, you have to be so careful what you allow in here, allow in your ears. Obviously what you see with your eyes, but what you allow in your ears. Because the Lucifer was the angel of music. That's why he's able to manipulate. That's why music can take you into trances. Rock concerts can just, I've been there. I'm not saying you can't go, but you just be choosy where you go. I think I've probably said this before. Be very choosy where you go because of the stuff. You know that when you listen to certain music, there is like a demonic feel to it. Has anybody ever put music on? Though I'm going to switch that off. Yeah? And I'm not saying any genre of music. I'm not saying all this music is, no. It's the words. It's the words that you're singing, right? Because beats get you, don't they? Satan is very clever. So just be aware of what you're subjecting your soul to. Because honestly, as you subject your soul, there will be a manifestation of whatever you've been listening to, right? And certainly if you're listening to stuff that's depressive and, and oppressive, you will start to feel that way yourself and you'll have no energy and you'll be like, why do I feel like this? And you'll start getting angry and uh, it, it just goes on and on. So be very careful because Lucifer was the angel of music. Everything was created in him. He just walked and he sounded. Satan perverted a third of the angels. We know that. Revelation 12, 7 to 9. And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought. But they did not prevail. Nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out. That serpent of old called the devil and Satan. Who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth. And his angels were cast out with him. Now, some people say with that scripture, it's about during the tribulation. So angels and, and Lucifer, he, or Satan as he is now, he still has access in the heavenlies. Okay, but there will be a time where they will just be here and there will be nowhere to go. That's why I believe we were not born for the tribulation. We will be out of here in Jesus' name. Amen. So, the heavenlies. You all still with me? Okay, like now. Woo. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. Oh, it's a lot. I know it's a lot, but you're doing really well. Okay. Pfft. Honestly, I keep doing this. I killed my hair this morning, and there's wispy bits, and it's just in my face all the time. Sorry. <laughs> oh, goodness me. Right. Heavenlies. So there are three heavens. You know that? Most of you would know that. There's the third heaven. The third heaven is where God's throne is. Jesus is also at the right-hand side of the Father. Praise God. Psalm 11 verse 4, the Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. Psalm 103 verse 19, the Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom rules over all. 
Hebrews 8, 1 to 3 in the New Living Translation. Here is the main point. We have a high priest, talking about Jesus, who sat down in the place of honor beside the throne of the majestic God in heaven. There he ministers in the heavenly tabernacle, the true place of worship that was built by the Lord and not by human hands. I love that. So God is in the third heaven. Then there's the second heaven. So the second heaven is the atmosphere above the earth. Now we're talking supernatural here, okay? So the second heaven. This is where the war is taking place. Ephesians 2 verse 2, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. What is it talking about? The prince of the power of the air. That is Satan's domain right now. Ephesians 2 verse 2 in the New Living Translation, you used to live in sin just like the rest of the world, obeying the devil, the commander of the powers in the unseen world. He is the spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey God. So he's operating in this level, okay? But the manifestation of what's going on there is happening on this level, on earth. Ephesians 6, 12 to 13. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. You know this scripture. But against what? principalities against powers against the rulers of the darkness of this age against spiritual hosts of wickedness in where the heavenly places therefore take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand okay this warfare is going on in the heavenlies not in heaven rebellion took place in heaven and that was dealt with. But then Satan was cast down, and he is in this second heaven in the atmosphere, and that's where war takes place. Then we have the first heaven. Where's the first heaven? Earth. Earth. I know you don't feel like it's heaven. It's just described that way, okay? We see the manifestations of what is going on in the second heaven on earth. Demons also operate in the first heaven, okay? Principalities and powers and rulers of wickedness operate here. Those demons, they operate on earth. And as part of this church, and many of you will know that we have seen that and we've cast plenty of demons out of people so we know they're very real and they're very wicked and they're very evil and they're controlled from, um, well, they're controlled by Satan, Okay, still with me? There's a hierarchy amongst Satan's army of evil angels. Same way as God has a hierarchy, uh, has, you know, a, a kingdom and rank and file, same way the enemy does. Okay, and we know we have principalities, which are the top. They control kingdoms, countries, and regions of the earth right? They possibly could have been archangels. They could have been higher angels than that, okay? They are prevalent. And I said this before, you know, because you see over nations, over countries, there's wickedness, there's evil, there's poverty, there's sickness, there's violence, you know, there's, there's racism, that, that spirit of racism, that is an angel, that is a principality. It is wicked and it is evil. And, and that's why we can't seem to get away from this stuff. There's so much we can't seem to get away from. But that's because the controlling authority, Satan's army, are controlling nations and kingdoms. Does that make sense? Our job, and I've said this before, you see, those principalities are ruling. They're doing what they're doing. There will come a day when Jesus comes back. He, everything will be defeated. Everything will be cast into the pit of hell. But for this moment in time, our job is to minister to people. Because when we minister to people, when we see revival in nations, that changes the atmosphere. And it means the principalities and powers cannot operate in the way they used to operate. Why? Because we're pulling them down. No, that's not our job. The angels do that. What we do is minister to people and we pray. And our prayers change the atmosphere. So it means they are without strength. 
That's why it's important that we preach the gospel, that we're out on the streets, that we pray for our nation and we pray for our cities because then God deals with those kinds of demonic forces. We deal with the demons. Demons are whiny and stupid and, and they're just full of nonsense, right? And we have all power and authority over them. Amen. Because of the Holy Ghost and the name of Jesus. We can't do anything without the name of Jesus. Everything is by the name of Jesus. So there's those principalities, there's the powers, there's the rulers of the darkness, and there's the hosts of wickedness. And they are all operating in systems and in governments. Okay? So we need to be praying because these demonic forces are operating over, over something. That's not necessarily saying that people have demons in them, although you know, but just the way the organization and just all this, you know, well, even now, dare I say it? Am I allowed to say the, say it, say, I know what you would say, Barbara, but you won't get into trouble. <laughs> they won't pull you down. <laughs> but, you, you know, the whole movement, the, the transgender movement, it's not the people. We don't fight against flesh and blood. There are principalities and powers operating here. And as the church, this finger pointing really doesn't work because it's the love of God and the goodness of God that draws all man to repentance. Amen? Amen? So as frustrating as it is because you can see that it's so wrong, and I read today about stuff, you know, with young children giving them puberty blockers and all this stuff. And ch because ultimately, see, this is what Satan has done. And going back to that conversation we had while I was talking to you about sex, he's tried all that. He's done all that. Now he's moving on. It gets sicker and sicker and darker and darker, right? And now it's so dark that we're turning our young children into the opposite of what they were created to be right? Now, those young children do not know. They hardly stand a chance. Do you know why? Because of the principality and power that is ruling this actual movement. So when we understand those things, it takes our spiritual warfare to a different level. Because like, ah, now we can see. Now we're not fighting the person or the parents. Or hey, can you parents allow this? We're not fighting that. Jesus never fought that way. He dealt with it with signs, wonders, and miracles. He delivered them. He cast the demons out. He put people back on their feet and make them upright. Amen? And it's the same thing with us. So we love people. We don't compromise. We don't say it's okay because it's not okay. And if we have an opportunity to stand and say something, absolutely. But it's the way you say it. You say it with authority, but you say it with all boldness, but you say it with love. Because the enemy has no weapon against the love of God. There's nothing he can do. He cannot fight the agape love of God. And so I want to encourage you. You love people. You pray for them as individuals. If you know people like that, struggling with that identity, they've got an identity crisis, or they've even turned that way, there is always hope. There is always hope in God. Do not give up on anybody. But that's what Satan has done. Pervert us as sexually as he can, and then he moves on to perverting our whole being. That we were that, but now it's demonic. And you know that, right? So, okay. Whew. Six minutes. Do you think I can do it? Yes, amen. Woo, glory to God. Okay. So we have the principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, hosts of wickedness, demons. Demons demonize humans. That's what they do. Principalities don't demonize us. It's demons. They enter into the soul of us, our mind, will, and emotions, and they oppress us before we were born again, even sometimes during we were born again. And you're like, but how can that be? I'm born again. I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. It has nothing to do with your spirit man. Your spirit man was dead in Christ. You believe in Jesus, poof, it comes alive. Suddenly you have that root to God and you can speak to him. The Holy Ghost comes. He's a gift. He fills your 
spirit man, not your soul man. So in your spirit man then, you have like your tongues, not all of you, but many of you, if you don't have tongues, come today and we'll pray for your heavenly language. You start speaking in tongues. It's nothing to do with your soul, your mind, will, and emotions. It comes out of your spirit. Rivers of living water flow. Amen? So this is nothing to do with your spirit man. You're made perfect there. But the soul is continually getting saved. It has to get saved, which is why we read the word, we renew our mind, we come to church, we worship. For our spirit, no, because the spirit is perfect. It's for the flesh. It's for the soul of us. Because if we didn't do that, we would backslide. And the spirit is alive and starving out there. So that's why I'm saying backsliders, get your act together and get back into church. Amen. Okay, so that's what the demons do. They're disembodied spirits that roam the earth. I would love to go into that, who they are, but I really don't have time. Oh, but I do like a little live stream on a Friday, and I'll be saying it all on there. So join in. It's Instagram. Instagram Live, 7 p.m. on a Friday night. I'm talking all about deliverance at the moment. Praise God. Okay. So, they're disembodied spirits that roam the earth. They cannot stay without a body. When you die, your spirit man goes because it's illegal entry to be on the earth without a body. That's why demons search for bodies. They search for open doors. They find it most times when people are small or when you're in the womb. So you cannot defend yourself against them. And you grow up all your life not even realizing there's a demonic oppression on you, but just feeling heavy and not good enough and wanting to commit suicide and and just hating yourself and not even being able to work it out. And you do everything you can do, especially when you get born again to love God and do what God's called you to do, and yet this thing just pulls you down. It's demonic, and that's part of the plan that Satan has to control mankind. When we get born again, so he can't stop us getting born again, but he can stop us fulfilling the the call of God on our lives. How can he do that? By oppressing us with these demons in our soul. And many times you can come to church and the worship will set you free. Reading your word will set you free. But there's other times where you really need help and you need somebody to come along like Jesus did and cast those devils out of you. And the moment they're cast out, you feel completely different. You cannot even imagine that you live the other way. And so that, what we call the ministry of deliverance, it's not weird, it's not just It's nothing to be ashamed of. It's the way Satan attacks mankind. And many times it's hereditary. And I spoke about that Friday night. It comes from a family line. You didn't even have a choice. It was there all along. But what we do in this church, and praise God, Kamalita did it last week, right? You all pray for each other. We broke hereditary curses and stuff that comes down through the bloodline. It is so important. It's the way Satan attacks the people on the earth. Amen? Amen? Two minutes. Glory to God. Okay, this is the good news. Colossians 2 verse 15. Having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. Hallelujah. Jesus won. Jesus has the victory. Amen? Jesus has all victory. And actually, he did it on his own because he came as a man. He suffered as a man. He was crucified, beaten beyond recognition. The crown of thorns shoved on his head. Blood came from every part of him. But that precious blood redeems every single one of us. And now we no longer have to be controlled by the enemy. We can give our lives purely and completely to Jesus Christ. Amen? He did that for us. He rescued us. And when you realize he rescued us, yes, from a lost eternity but he rescued us from all that demonic activity that people in the world are subject to we are not subject to that amen Ephesians 6 10 to 13 almost there finally my brethren who finally be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil For we do not fight against flesh and blood, here it is again, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in their heavenly places. Therefore, what are you going to do? Take up the armor. Colossians 2.20, New Living Translation. 
You have died with Christ, and He has set you free from the spiritual powers of this world. Hallelujah! You have been set free. They have no right to hassle you. Angels assist us, demons oppress us. Angels, yes, demons, no. So we are happy that we can pray and God can dispatch those angels. But we are not putting up with those demons in Jesus' name. Amen? We are not alone. You've got the Holy Ghost. I know, band, come on up. I can see you all closing in on me. All right, I get the message. We are not alone. Turn to your neighbor, say, you are not alone. You got the Holy Spirit. You got the name of Jesus. Come on, tell your neighbor. You got the Holy Spirit. You got the name of Jesus. You got the Word of God. You got the blood of the Lamb. And you got the angels of God. Hallelujah. Come on now. Hallelujah. Let me just leave you with this. 2 Kings 6, 16 to 17 again. So he answered, do not fear, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And I want to say, there are so many more with us. As children of God, as the warehouse church, as every church, as the church, the ecclesia, the called out ones. We have an army behind us. We are not fighting on our own. This is not just little old me. This is little old me with the name of Jesus, the blood of the Lamb, the Word of God, the angels of God. That makes me go from here to here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are not these little Christians trying to be controlled and shut up and don't say a word. Oh, no. We are mighty, mighty warriors of God. Amen. We have been given all authority, all power because of Jesus Christ and his sacrifice on the cross and his resurrection. So therefore, we too walk in the same way he walked when he was on earth. And what did he do? He preached the gospel. He laid hands on the sick and he cast out demons. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Come on, let's stand to our feet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Woo! In the name of Jesus, let's just pray. Let's just pray in this place. God, let us see that we are not alone. Come on, let's pray. I know it's slightly over. Let us see that we are not alone. In this year of the supernatural, we pray, God, open our spiritual eyes that we may know we are surrounded on every side by the angelic hosts and chariots of fire. Thank you, Father. The enemy has been defeated and the battle is won. Hallelujah. Father, we give you all the glory in this place right now. Come on, just thank him. Thank him for what he's prepared, what he's done, that he truly is the Alpha and Omega. He's dealt with the beginning, he's dealt with the end and everything in the middle. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I said a slow song, but I think we need to just come on in our victory. Man, are Hallelujah. You excited? Are you excited to know we have the victory? Turn to somebody and say, we have the victory. Come on, you need to jump up and down. You need to dance. I want to tell you, Pastor Donna, as she set it up for next. Next week, I'm talking about supernatural warfare. I'm telling you the what. You were preaching. I want to come up and just give you a big oh. hug and a then you're gonna... <laughs> and say, I love you, girl. I mean, I'm, I'm so excited. This is We are in the last days, and there is a work to be done. How many of you know we're not fighting against flesh and blood? You're not fighting against your boss. You know, the stuff that's happened in Russia recently with the, those deaths and the terrorists and the wars and everything's going on. There's principalities. That's right. And we have the power as the church to change things. We have the power to activate the angels, activate God himself to move in nations. And I'm telling you, this is our time. I want to pray. Every head bowed and every eye closed. If you're here today and my wife spoke about you being backslidden, what does that mean? That means that once you were following God, and then you stepped away. It's as simple as that. You stepped away from him. 
You're no longer serving Him. You're no longer walking as you should be walking. Well, I want to pray for you. The Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And if you're here also and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, he goes on to say that the gift of eternal life, the gift from God is eternal life, and he offers you that today. I want to tell you this morning, like the father who was waiting for his son, the prodigal who walked away, ended up in a pit, in a pigsty, came to his senses. My prayer is that you come to your senses today. You come to your senses this morning and say, you know what? I need to return back to God. I need to give my life to Christ. I'm no longer going to work things out myself, but I'm going to trust in the Lord with all my heart. Hallelujah. Is there anybody here today that you say, I need to rededicate my life to the Lord. I need to give my life to Jesus. Jesus died on the cross, and we sung about it earlier, for your sins, your diseases, and by his stripes you are healed. Amen. But most importantly, you are saved. And if you dedicate and commit your life to him, and you say, yes, Lord, I give you my life, I want to tell you, you will spend eternity in heaven. You will have a power residing in you that will come upon you to change your street, to change your city in Jesus' name. With every head bowed and every eye closed, you say to me, Pastor, would you pray for me because I've walked away from God, but I need to come back to Him. If you're out there as well, you say, Pastor, would you pray for me because I need to give my life to Christ. I've been going my own way, trying to work my own life out, but I know today... This day, this morning, I need to surrender my life. If that is you, before I pray, I want you to slip up your hand right now. Say, would you pray for me, Pastor? Would you pray for me? Would you pray with me? God bless you. Is there anyone else? Say, would you pray for me? Pastor, God bless you. Is there anybody else? Would you pray for me, Pastor? I'm not walking as I should be walking. I'm not where I should be. Can we all pray this prayer together? And those watching on live stream, say, Dear Heavenly Father, I admit that I've sinned. I've fallen short. But I believe today, Heavenly Father, that you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for me. He died for my sin. He took my place. And today, I commit my life to you. Heavenly Father, I walked away from you. But today, I'm surrendering my life. I give you my all. I confess with my mouth. And I believe in my heart. Come on, pray with me. Say, I confess with my mouth. And I believe in my heart that Jesus, you died on the cross for me. And today, I give you my life. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, amen. Give the Lord a hand clap and praise him. Come on now. Now, I know we all prayed that prayer, but I prayed that prayer. I wanted everybody to pray that prayer for those people who are praying it for the first time and those people rededicate their life to know that they're not alone, <laughs> to know that we're standing with them. We're going to go out with a song in a moment. We're going to have our prayer team come and pray. And if you prayed that prayer, if you lifted up your hand, I'm going to be standing right by here. Come and see me and say, Pastor, would you pray for me? Can we have our pastors come and our prayer team come? And we're just going to, come on, we just lift our hands. Father, we surrender to you. We surrender to your will and purpose. We thank you, Lord, that there is more for us than against us. And Lord God, today we realize we are not alone. And so, Lord, we just thank you for this week that it's going to be different. We're going to walk in an authority. We're going to walk in a boldness. We're going to walk knowing that you are with us. Heavenly Father, we give you our all. We surrender our lives. Have your way in our lives this week, this month, this year as we walk in the supernatural. And everybody said, amen, amen. Come on, give the Lord a high clap. Can we just say goodbye? To, can we give it up for all our guys watching via live stream, guys watching in Portugal, the guys watching in Phoenix, US, and all over. Thank you so much. If you prayed that prayer also, let our guy team know. Let our guys know. And then we want to send you some literature and connect with you. God bless you.